Here. Roll call. Chisel. Here. Neil. Here. Carlson. Here. Luce. Here. Zittergrun. Here. Hadley. Here. Johnson. Here. Okay, um, Wanda, you were going to introduce Renee. I will. Renee, would you stand up? Okay, so this is Renee Hill. She is our new administrative assistant in our office. So, yep. <laughs> Uh, she is responsible for payroll. Yay. And she is uh, Greg's new right hand. And so she's working real hard on, on trying to get up to speed with, with all that that entails with P&G and Board of Adjustment and our new building code. And then she'll be also be working um, and helping a lot with our record retention. And so welcome. Thanks for being here. All right. And I'm going to do it just a little bit different as far as public comment is concerned, because I believe there's people that want to speak to the pickup spots and the parking. I believe that that's some people want to speak to that. And then we also have, I think, people outside that want to speak to the mask. Emily, do you know how many are out there? Two, I'm in online. I, I didn't, I didn't. Okay, and they, they would be on uh, line. So, um, Okay, so the first people that I'd like to speak deal with uh, the parking downtown. Do you want to come up? We still have the mask mandate though too, but come up and speak. Uh, my name is Joe Hamill. Okay. Uh, my address is 108 West Water Street in Decorah and I own Hamill Jewelers. Um, in regards to the, the parking downtown, uh, I think that uh, with this extra parking you're putting in front of these restaurants, um, Donlins, um, these other places that have parking spots that are being used for so people can sit down and have a cup of coffee. I've been in town now, it'll be 25 years in July. And the first meeting I ever went to with the retail and many since then has to do with, we don't have enough parking. Mm. People are asking, we don't have enough parking, but yet we have enough, set a couple of tables out, you know, uh, so people can sit in the street and eat and drink. Uh, that isn't right. I've got people that come in a store that are elderly and it's not just my store, but they come in and they don't have a place to park. They have to walk several blocks or whatever it is to, to do their business downtown. And Decorah is a busy city. There's a lot of people that come to Decorah, they look for parking. And to be very honest, if, if these businesses want to put tables out, let them put in the back of the store in the alley. Mm -hmm. Say, save the, the parking spots for people that are going to come to town and do business with the merchants. I just think that, like I said, for 25 years, it's been, we don't have parking. We don't have parking. Uh, that's a wonderful thing to have. Mm -hmm. And I just think that uh, there's better ways to utilize the space than sticking a couple tables on it. We've okay. given the businesses three, three feet in front. I think it's three feet in front of their business to put a table and chairs or whatever they want to do. You have the, the hotel, you've got uh, um, the co-op, you've got the bars, then they can set tables out three feet. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we need to give them the street. Mm -hmm. So I just think that if, if this passes or whatever, I think it needs to be done away with okay. for everybody. We, we will be working and discussing that. Uh, I appreciate you coming forth and giving us your opinion. And I think there's some other people that would have opinions that are online as well. But thank, thank you, very you much for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there someone, uh, is there anybody that is on Zoom that wishes to speak? Okay. 
Uh, so then what I will do is I'll move to the next topic. Is there anybody who wishes to speak uh, about the mask mandate that we will be discussing? Is there anybody online that wishes to speak to that? Uh, and if you are, uh, unmute yourself and say so. I should say that, say it that way. All right. Okay, and we didn't, there wasn't anybody outside. I was only, no, I was only saying in case there were a number of people. Okay, that's okay. Okay, that being said, is there anything else to come before the council of anything that's not on the agenda? Seeing and hearing none, we'll go on with the consent agenda. Item A, minutes of the May 3rd, 2021 meeting. Item B, claims. Item C, Resolution 3194, accepting Ridge Road improvements, Phase 2, Upper Ridge Road as complete and authorizing release of retainage. Item D, renewal Class B beer permit for Toppling Goliath, including outdoor service area and Sunday sales privileges. Item E, renewal Class B beer permit for Pulpit Rock Brewery, including outdoor service area and Sunday sales privileges. Item F, Renewal Class C beer permit for Quick Star on Short Street, including Class B wine and Sunday sales privileges. Item G, Renewal Class C beer for Quick Star, Montgomery Street, including Class B wine and Sunday sales privileges. Item eight, Resolutions 3190, accepting Quarry Street improvements as complete and authorizing release of retainage. Item I, Request to reserve 15 to 20 parking spaces at the west end of North Alley for the Mustang Club, Friday, May 21st, 2021, 4 to 6 p.m. Item J, Resolution 3192, setting June 7th at 5.45 p.m. as the date and time for a public hearing for a rezoning request at 1506 Laurel Drive from A1 Agriculture to R2 Single to four family residential. Item K, resolution 3193, setting June 21st at 5.45 p.m. as the date and time for a public hearing to amend chapter 1504, C3 design criteria, sign permit approval. Item L, resolution 3173, rejecting all bids for the 2021 Ice Cave Steps Project. Item M, resolution 3187, setting June 21st, 5.45 p.m. as the date and time for a public hearing for a driveway easement with Three Chicks rental, Rentals, LLC. Item N, approve utility easement with Three Chicks Rentals, LLC. Item O, approve flood control project maintenance easement with Three Chicks Rental, LLC. And item P, Approve a C3 design application for a mural at Bresterheim Museum, 520 West Water Street. I'm run out of alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> Good job reading. Move for approval of the consent agenda as presented. Second. Add a motion by Chisel, second by Luce for approval. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Roll call. Chisel. Aye. Luce. Aye. Neil. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Zittergrun. Aye. Hadley. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Okay. Uh, conduct a public hearing on proposed fiscal year 21 budget amendment. Do you, would you like to give something before I open the public hearing on that? Yep, if you just give me a second to get through all my paperwork here. Okay, I will just um, quickly go through the main components of your of the amendment. Um, in public safety, uh, there was forty five thousand dollars for a that hybrid police cruiser. Uh, we had to replace the drone for $20,000. We did get an insurance reimbursement for that. There were legal expenses um, for $9,000 and a 20, the 2019 flood, um, we 
finally finished that, that up and we've gotten our final reimbursements for that, but that was another $14,000. Uh, public works, um, engineering, we're amending for $30,000. Uh, we have some equipment repairs in the street department for $25,000. Uh, we have the airport driveway rehab at $170,000. But if his memory serves, I think that was a project that, um, that was rather grand, than 90 was, 10, is that yeah. 100%? So when that ends up, and that's mostly paid, it just hasn't quite been final yet. But it, when it is, we'll get those final um, reimbursements in. And then the airport, plow, truck, and more. Again, there was a $30,000 grant for that through that CARES Act, which is paid at 100%. Uh, culture and recreation. Uh, the East Main Street Park, we're projecting maybe 100,000 will be spent by the end of the year. Most of that, it's, it's all covered by donations. Now we'll see, maybe that won't happen yet this year, but it's in here just in case. Uh, and the campground, um, we're amending for 31,000. That's basically the increased usage at the campground. Um, but then there was also offsetting revenue for that. Uh, community betterment and economic development, uh, paying out, well, I amended for 107.5 because that's what we thought it was going to be. It ended up being 117 um, for the Fox and Coon Club, but we amended for 107.5, which is what we thought it was going to be. Um, and then the general government um, was $50,000 for the Maple Street House um, purchase of that, and then the demo fees. Some of that will come back in grants. Uh, debt service, uh, $165,315 there. That's a capitalized interest on the Locust Road bonds. That was borrowed as part of that bond project. But of course, we didn't know what that was going to be when the budget was done. Um, and then capital improvements, uh, we got $450,000 we are anticipating for East Main Street. Um, again, we got that DOD, DOT reimbursement of a million dollars. Um, 500 for Oneota Bridge. I don't know if that might be on your amendment again next year. It was on the amendment last year. It's, that project's being very slow, being finalized. Um, and then 102,200 for the Pole Line Road Bridge. Um, and your enterprise funds, um, we've got 35,000 at the wastewater treatment plant for our whole study that's been happening out there. Uh, 55,000 for the air handling unit that um, had to be replaced. And then um, 173,000 for Metronet undergrounding, undergrounding those lines, um, which is coming back, of course, through reimbursements and, and cash on hand in that fund. Um, but that's kind of the highlights of your amendment. <laughs> okay. Can you? It's not our money. Uh, I, I gotta open the public hearing first. Oh sure. Yeah. Um, I'll open the public hearing for anybody who wishes to speak on this uh, fiscal twenty-one budget amendment. Is there anybody in house? Don't see anybody. Is there anybody on Zoom that wishes to speak? I don't see anybody there. So I'm going to close the public hearing. And then it's resolution 3191 approving the proposed fiscal year budget amendment. And I was just going to ask, and, and you might not be able to, but um, I know when I first started this process, and I am actually saying this for the public as well, that if you were to just say the city council is amending their budget for you know, this many hundreds of thousands of dollars, we haven't budgeted well. But it's how we do our budget. And Chad always made a statement about this is how we do our budget. Right. When we plan our budget, we don't. Um, it, it's not that we don't have money in in right. accounts for these issues. We just like to to publicly make aware of what it is we're spending money on. Exactly. And I do think that it would be good just for the public to understand that this isn't an, an overspending by the city by any means. This is just how we then at the end of the year reconcile the money that we sort of put away knowing these things would come up. Right. So some of these things, these things are, are cash on hand, right? but for the lion's share of it, there's reimbursements coming back in and revenue coming back in. So our total revenue amendment is 2,101,000. Our total expenditures were 2,315,000. Yes, some of that is cash on hand, but then we have 
those dollars in our fund balance for those emergencies that come up because they do, and this happens in every single city across the state. It's, we're, it's not just an anomaly for Decorah. It happens in every single city. I just want, I always like the public to, just always like to make that statement yep. as opposed and to- And that's fine, yeah, because there's a lot of things when we do, did this budget 18 months ago that we didn't know was gonna happen today. Great, so. Thank you. Okay, thank you for presenting that and pulling Probably more together. information than you want. All the needs. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking for. I'd move to approve resolution 3191, approving the proposed budget amendment. I'll, I'll second. second. Uh, motion made by Chisel, second by Zitagruen. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Chisel. <clears throat> Zitagruen. Aye. Neil. Aye. Hadley. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Luce. Aye. Very good. Uh, number seven, consider revoking curbside pickup spot privileges. Uh, Wanda, you wanna give some background on that, please? Okay, um, you voted on this last time and it was a tie vote. Uh, council person Luce asked it to be brought back and put on the agenda again tonight. So I don't know if he has anything he would like to add to that. Just that in terms of considering and thinking about and also having given the public a couple of weeks to uh, recognize this may be an issue that I uh, wanted to bring it back up so we could indeed uh, take this restrictions of parking away from uh, downtown. Yeah, I continue to be in support of revoking these um, these reserve spots, which I don't think we ever actually gave privileges for, but it just kind of happened and, and we let it happen uh, because of, for good reasons during the pandemic. Uh, maybe we gave privilege, I don't know, but I think it's I think it's time. I think especially given that the council has uh, decided to experiment with these these parklets, um, it'd be good to unrestrict as many downtown parking spots as possible. Uh, and and finally, you know, just again. Um, the most efficient use of, of a downtown parking spot that we decide should be a parking spot uh, is is unrestricted. Um, that, that tends to result in the best traffic flow. So I, I think it's time to do it. Does this, will this also then take away, I know Donlin has three. One has been there, was there before pre-pandemic. Juan just told me they'll keep the one. Yeah, that's what okay. we talked about the last time. They'll keep the one that was approved four years ago, yeah. four or five right. years ago. I wouldn't, mm. I wouldn't anticipate taking that one away. And has there been any discussion with the co-op for curbside pickup at a time, like at a time, like Tuesdays from blank to blank? I, I'm I mean, just thinking about the businesses no. that, are, that are most impacted and, and I people. think the co-op, given that they have a parking lot right there, could reserve some spots pretty close to the door in the parking lot. Sure, sure, that, sure. I mean, I just look, I, I was just trying to think through everyone who's using it. And yep, I, that's right, yep. It seems like there's alley access for everyone or some other creative way that doesn't require reserving spots downtown. Okay. So there has been, we did talk about a listing of who that, who they would be and you'd be sending out notifications to them, correct? I, I'm, I didn't <clears> understand I you said later. we had talked about who you need to notify that they no longer are, can use those. Yeah, and, and we will do that. Okay. If, if this happens tonight, we just will a, certainly do just that. Just a note to Steve's comment regarding the co-op uh, po parking lot. Um, I believe that all of those spaces are public uh, publicly owned spaces by the city. Yeah, they are. It's, it's uh, the city's lot. Thanks, thanks for the correction. So I appreciate it. I guess I was wrong there. They couldn't do that either. For, Not without permission. It would be very easy though if they wanted to use the back where it's mm -hmm. flat and just where they have their deliveries because I think we already have that blocked off for deliveries. And, and I mean, pickups back there. And you could also call the co-op and say, "Hey, I'm you know parked in a blue car." Uh, <laughs> you know, and and they'll. <laughs> our businesses are creative and adaptable. They've proven that this year, and I bet they'll prove it again if we take away this option. So I would move that we rescind these pickup parking spot privileges. Second. Motion made by Luce to rescind, second by Chisel. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, roll call. Luce. Aye. Chisel. Aye. Zittergrun. Aye. Neil. Aye. Hadley. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Okay. Consider approval of proposed fiscal year 
21 and 22 sustainability commission budget. I want to remind uh, the council that their request was for the sustainability commission to come forth with a, an approximate budget that they think that they could be spending so that the council would have uh, some kind of an idea and also the fact that whatever and they do want to spend, they need to come forth and ask for the funding. Yep. Uh, just as someone who's uh, working with the Sustainability Commission, I do want to say, I think um, they, they, were, they welcomed the task, but they also felt a little trepidation in knowing that they didn't know what was planning ahead. So I know that they already have met with city staff talking about communications. Um, so within the communication aspect of the sustainability plan, there is this sort of idea behind a a building a communications plan and sending out an RFP, probably getting a grant, again, thinking about grant matches. And I think that was their biggest concern that they can't foresee every grant that might come across their table. And so just knowing that some grants require a $10,000 match. So they didn't want to put in a huge communication budget, but that is one area where I know um, they've already begun to look for a grant and thinking about an RFP for that. Well, and I think too, being it's the first year that we're all kind of working through some of the things that things will be able to be a little clearer towards the end, especially when we're talking about budget discussion and stuff. Yeah. I do really appreciate their, the commission's work uh, on supporting childcare and, uh, yes. and social sustainability um, for affordable housing for that grant application in, in the second year. Um, sustainability is so much more than environment and, and resilience. And I think the budget res result or uh, reflects that. Um, I would love to have seen the waste moved forward um, because recycling on Water Street is, is always an issue, but uh, we can't always have everything all at once. But I do appreciate them projecting it out. I, um, I do object to the $10,000 for legal services. I think that's um, a pretty vague uh, uh, term for what they, they're wanting, being, want, want to use that money for, and $10,000 is an awful lot. Uh, once again, that's what they would estimate. Anytime they would be going for legal services, they would be coming before the council for approval to do so. And I, I appreciate that clarification, but then I'm, I'm wondering, and maybe this is a question for John too, to what extent uh, is the wording on this potentially misleading um, either to the public or legally? Is this something that we should more just be receiving uh, than, than approving if, if we're not actually saying, yeah, we're dedicated to spending this money? Could you, could you give us advice on that? Well, you're, if, you approve, if you approve it, you're not obligated to spend it or approve each uh, um, request for spending. However, at the same time, uh, I think it provides a cap for what the uh, Sustainability Commission, uh, so they shouldn't be certainly spending over it and they shouldn't be spending over the amount that's allocated for each line item. Then I, so then I would actually say we shouldn't approve it, but only because so for waste infrastructure, that right there, I think the reason it says zero um, was again, because they weren't sure what would be headed. So they've talked to Smid about recycling containers and they know that they've already, I mean, they've already done work on waste. They just didn't know what to put there. So, and actually I'm, I'm curious cause I'm like, wait, is this the last one you got? Cause I felt like they did put some things in for waste. Um, this is the last one I remember getting. I feel I think, there's a, there's a, there's a different one. But and I kind of agree also with the fact that um, I was a little concerned about the wordage. If you are approving a budget, you're approving their budget and that's the money they should spend it. So yeah. it really was more, I think the council was looking for guidelines. Uh, yeah, to the extent that we didn't communicate very well, you know, that's on us, but I would characterize our conversation as, as being more interested in knowing what, what hopes they had for the money. Um, and we got a good list, I think, um, but I, I don't, I don't want to give the impression that that the council in approving, you know, this budget is uh, is sort of saying, yeah, we're committed to spending all this money. I want to make sure that we don't give that impression. And, and something I'm not clear about: before any of this money goes out, 
is there any control? Does it come to the yes. city clerk's yeah. office? No, that's it comes but, back here. It comes but it doesn't council. come back to the council. Yes, it does. does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay. Well, then yeah. there is a control. Yes. So that's why I don't think we need to approve the budget. I think that the notion behind the budget was that the Sustainability Commission would let the council have an understanding of where the priorities were and what, what things were happening so that we had an idea of how much money maybe there was in, in terms of other things that might come to our feet and our table, right? Um, Mayor, if I, I may. Sure. I would say that the label of it is the Sustainability Commission estimated budget speaks to they are now letting us know what their estimates are. So I think we should accept this estimated budget and uh, thank them for putting it before us. Okay, so for from my understanding, you know, it was not on the agenda at our last meeting because when I got it, I didn't realize <coughs> that they wanted it to come to council. And after that meeting, um, I had a few comments that, how come that wasn't on the council agenda for approval? Which is why it's on here tonight. Well, right. I, we, had, we had stated previously how we were working with that. Right, it, it has already gone through council. Last, no, last the council's never the seen meeting this budget before, before that, no. that any request for, for actual expenditure has to come back to council. But we had we had asked but we had asked them to create a budget so we had an idea of what right. things they were thinking. And right. I and I do think the purple air sensors was why it was asked because they want approval to to purchase those right. air sensors. Right. And that's why that's on here too. But yeah. I understood yeah. they also wanted wanted the, the budget on here. Now if that's not accurate, I mean no, I'm, I'm hearing I'm hearing a sense that we're all grateful for the sense of what you know they're hoping for or what their plans might be, and I, I feel like we're also all in agreement that um, that that in approving this or whatever we wouldn't necessarily be authorizing them to spend the money without coming before us with each item, right. um, and and I, I share Steve Luce's sentiment that the best way to uh, to sort of realize that as a body is is to accept with gratitude. Is there a way that we can do that tonight or would that have to be on a future agenda? Well, no, it's on the agenda. I think you can do that. I, and I think maybe your the wordage you use, um, accepting versus approving is, is a big difference in that, in that verbiage. But since there's a, is there a resolution? No, no, no it's okay. just no. a motion. Well, I mean, no one's made the motion yet, right? I can right. make one so, more comment about the yeah, budget. You were just about, I want to address Kirk's concern with legal fees. I do think um, when you look at what we tasked the MEU task group to do, one of the first things that we asked them to do was to address the Iowa Utilities request from the city that we provide um, some type of statement to the Iowa Utilities Board about um, the MEU process. So that does require some of John's oversight, um, probably somebody else's oversight. So we, we need to be able to access legal counsel in order to be able to communicate with the Iowa Utility Board. This isn't about going for an MEU. This is just about what the, the, the utility board had asked us after our last um, and if they needed to spend that, communication. They would be coming before the city. Of course they would be coming before us. Yeah. So it looks like we're, are you clear on your recommend in the motion? Then? I'm, I'm happy to make a motion. Sure, that'd be good. I move that we accept with gratitude the proposed fiscal year 21 and fiscal year 22 sustainability commission budget. There's an estimated, estimated budget. Yeah. Thank you. I'll accept that as a friendly amendment. Second. A motion made by Zitagruen, second by Hadley. Any further discussion? Do you need the language for that, Wanda? Do you want me okay, to say it again? Okay, I just want to confirm that I got the language because I didn't quite understand that little exchange at the end yep. that you are, um, it's a motion to accept with gratitude the fiscal 21 and fiscal 22 sustainability commission Estimated, estimated budget. Estimated budget. Okay. okay. And I, I am grateful. They probably put a lot of work into this. They yep. did. Got it. Okay. Roll call. Sittergrun. Aye. Hadley. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Luz. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Neil. Aye. Chisel. Okay. And then there is a request, uh, consider approval of the purchase of two Purple Air PA-11 uh, SD air sensors. 
at 279 plus shipping. I'd make a motion to approve the purchase of the two air sensors. Loose would second. Motion made by Adley, second by Loose. Uh, just uh, information, because I'd been listening to that. Luther College is buying two sensors in this project for being able to um, test air quality. And their suggestion was to be that the city would buy two also that would go along with the project. Yep, and these will measure um, air quality and real time in Decorah. And um, I do believe we'll have, I mean, it'll be part of the communication plan to have access that people can access the air quality information publicly, hopefully on our website, which is why we need to think about a communication plan so we can do these things. And, and just a nod, a nod posthumously to Eric Brandt, who passed away a, a year ago, um, who, who was very um, instrumental in making me uh, at least personally aware of the air quality issues in Decorah okay. and was an early advocate for this. So um, here's to you. Okay. Any other further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hadley. Aye. Luce. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Neil. Aye. Chisel. Zittergoon. Aye. Okay. Consider approval of amending Article 11, Section 4 and 7 of the Decorah Volunteer Fire Department Constitution amending residency requirements and new member qualifications. Who would like to give information on this? Can we? Oh, okay. Um, they would like to see their current, um, current reading in those bylaws our um, four membership are number one, be a US citizen, number two, be at least 18 years of age and less than 56, three, have a high school diploma or high school equivalency, and four, a, a valid driver's license and be able to insure a vehicle. They would like that language to say, um, be at least 18 years of age, be able to legally work in the United States, have a high school diploma or high school equivalency and have a valid driver's license and be able to insure a vehicle. Can we, do you think they, can they just tell us about the amendments that they'd like or? Sure. Sure. Hello. <laughs> just state your name, your address. Yes, Steve Thank Smith, you. 606 Franklin uh, Street. I am also the Decora volunteer president. Fire department president, not the volunteer president. <laughs> it's a big job. So yes, uh, as Wanda said, we're asking uh, currently on, I believe that is amendment four, is that correct? Uh, that or, is or article four, section four. four. Yep. Article, article 11, 11, 11, sections section four. four and seven are four what you're seven. asking to have amended. Right. Yep. And one, is, one has to do with um, eligibility based on mainly age and some other issues. What we're uh, interested, we we are chain. We have already submitted to the council um, changes that we are, would like to make, and these are those changes. We're just asking for them to be put in a little sooner than we think can happen for a full um, full constitution or bylaws uh, article or, or vote. So um, yeah, so uh, it was recommended that we remove the fifty six. Uh, designee and also we are uh, have a 20 we have 18 in our bylaws the city code says 21 this kind of goes along with uh, number 12 on your or excuse me number 11 on your item um, so the the city code says 21 to 56 our uh, bylaws say 18 and must have uh, High school. applied for membership by age 56. Not so. So we have some instances where we have some uh, members who will be, and we have had members forced off because of this 56 rule. It's been suggested by ICAP lawyers that uh, that rule be changed due to age discrimination. So. Um, 
the other the other one, the other changes to those line items the US citizen and um, uh, was there another one no. driver's license no <laughs> wait 18 from to 21 18 18 yeah those those are those are what are coming down the road so I figured why not just add them tonight I'd make a motion approving the amendment of Article 11, Section 4 and 7. Okay. Loose would so second. I want to just touch real quickly on the residency piece. The residency currently um, states uh, a four mile radius of the station. And the residency requirement, we're, we're, um, we'd like to change uh, just to allow uh, special exceptions based on a person's special circumstances you know if you work within decora 40 hours a week and are able through your employer to respond to calls uh, monday through friday nine to five that is a very valuable uh thing for us so if you live 10 miles out and you can still make a call uh during those times we would welcome that with open arms yeah so um that's 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 the reason for that. And that would go to the investigating committee. Our investigating committee would then recommend a person outside the, the natural four mile limit. The four mile there is there. Uh, so we're not uh, poaching from other departments or getting people who just wanna be on our department for um, whatever reason. Yep. Uh, so um, so this, that, that's, that's the reason for that residency change. Request. And a nod to Dan Voss for bringing it to our attention as well. Right. And Dan Voss is uh, soon to turn 56. <laughs> Happy birthday soon, Dan. Uh, yeah. So this is this. He's the first uh, in a series of uh, over the next few years, a series of forced retirements that are coming. So, okay. so I mean, your motion still works. Yep. I just thought you might like to know what the other piece Rod of that was. Hadley. Second. Oh, second. Uh, second. Lou's actually seconded. No. Oh, I'll third. Steve right, seconded Steve? That. Correct. Oh, okay. Okay. Motion made by Hadley, seconded by Lou's. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Hold on. Oops. Sorry. Sorry. Sure. You said that if you're employed, if you're working home, you're employed mm -hmm. hours a week. But that's the way somebody comes home, they're like, We have not. We do have a, a a monthly county fire meeting. It's monthly, yeah, yeah. Quarterly. Sure. The only thing that might be a, a sticking point on that is we have requirements for uh, training that other departments may not have. And so we would, you know, part of the investigating committee would say, all right, you work in, in town 40 hours a week. We expect you to be at our training like you're a member of our, our, our department. There, there won't be any, um, you know, just because you work 40 hours a week and could come, we're not going to give them any other sort of special treatment. They're going to be expected to show up, do the work, uh, contribute to the department. But yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a valid idea for sure. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hadley. Aye. Luz. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Neil. Aye. Chisel. Zittergren. Aye. Okay, consider ordinance 1273, amending chapter 2.14.050 of the core city code regarding the age qualifications for volunteers, firefighters, first reading. Want to give any background? There again, that just changes yep. 
the age so it matches okay. their constitution. I, so. I move that we pass uh, approval of ordinance, no, I just lost it, 1273, uh, amending chapter 214.050 of the Decorah City Code regarding the age of firemen. Motion made by Neil. Second. Second. Uh, second by Zitagruen. Any further discussion? Roll call. Neil. Aye. Zitagruen. Aye. Chisel. Hadley. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Luce. Aye. I also, can we, um, I make a motion that we waive the second and third given that the impacted parties are here. It was and move to adopt. Move to adopt. Motion made by Neil to waive second and third and move to adopt. Luce will second. Seconded by Luce. Any further discussion? Yeah, just a quick question. I know <clears throat> for our full-time firefighters, we, they age out at a certain age, correct? Yep. They do because of employment rules, I believe. Okay. Um, Is there any well, state law code. regarding volunteers? I don't. I don't, I don't think so. No. no, not that I know of. Just for right. professional uh, firefighters, not for volunteers. Right. Right. But I just wonder if there's any for volunteers. Nope. Okay. Can we wave? Can we wave and adopt both of these? Yeah, that's what. Pardon. Is, was that the? Was oh, that's that the, motion? the motion. The motion is. There's a motion and second to wave and adopt both. Yep. Well, you ad you adapted the the one. Oh, you mean? Oh, one's amendment. an amendment. One's an ordinance. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Roll call. Neil. Aye. Luce. Aye. Chisel. Aye. Zittigrun. Aye. Hadley. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Okay, motion passed. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you very much for the work. Uh, consider ordinance, whoops, wrong one. Hang on. Oh, I was right. Set it again, what the heck? <laughs> Consider Ordinance 1275 rescinding the mask mandate first reading. I would move to approve Ordinance 1275 rescinding the mask mandate and follow the CDC guidelines. I'd have to agree with Randy. There's also, <clears throat> I saw Des Moines rescinded theirs, as did well, Cedar Rapids, I believe, and I think Ames is to be possibly doing theirs tonight as well. So. So yeah. we've got second. Randy making a motion, yep. Andy I'll the second. second. Discussion. Just in terms of following the CDC guidelines, um, the CDC guidelines, I think it's just important that we are clear with the community, refer to uh, vaccinated people uh, feeling being safe, going unmasked in the community, indoors, and in almost every activity. Uh, unvaccinated people are still encouraged by the CDC to wear a mask. Um, the director of the CDC has been pretty clear that, uh, that local leaders like us should not, people who set policy should not uh, instantly lift mask ordinances. They should consider their local case counts. Uh, they should consider whether they can differentiate between people who've been vaccinated uh, and people who have not, and they should consider the vaccination rate in the community. Um, their, their messaging says what we were saying last week or last meeting when we passed our benchmark, which is that the vaccines work and they're the way out of this. Uh, if a community is not sufficiently vaccinated at a high rate, there will be flare-ups again this fall with the flu season. If our community uh, continues to have a large proportion of people who choose not to get vaccinated, there will be uh, bad results. People will get sick. Uh, we might have to reconsider invoking a mask mandate if, if case counts go up, or at least I would push that we consider that. Uh, and and um, and I don't want to see that happen. So I really hope that people don't see this if we choose to rescind the mask mandate as the city council saying, coronavirus is over, everyone go back to normal. Mm -hmm. If you're not vaccinated, the CDC says you're supposed to keep wearing a mask so that you don't make other people sick, some of whom might die because of it. Uh, and and I think that it's just important that, that we be pretty clear about uh, that. I did, uh, just a note too, I have been attending the public uh, health meetings and uh, one of our other criteria was when we had enough vaccine for all people that want to be vaccinated uh, was one of the considerations and they have been working hard at using the number of doses that they have 
but they are seeing that they have more vaccines than what they had, but now they have been working with Luther. Uh, they did another, um, another uh, stop, I think last week, where they had people to come in for free. So they're continuing to support and get information out. They're starting to look at what it would look like for when vaccinations from 16 to 18. And so they're continuing to work with it, but I just wanted to pass that on in, in conjunction with this. So. Mayor, was there any report regarding the 11,000 in Winship County? Um, you mean Benchmark the, that we passed last time? Uh, no, there wasn't. Um, I know that there was questions as to why the city had used the county's numbers, but it was clear, I made it clear the fact that that was the only benchmark we could use um, and that we had used that benchmark uh, to, as far as the city was concerned too. Uh, they did not give a number. Um, I think they were encouraging people, let's say who've been vaccinated outside of the state or outside of the county to contact their uh, medical providers and let them know so that they can get accurate readings of as much as they can but that it has been very hard to be able to tell exactly how many have been vaccinated also. Any further discussion? No, I, I guess I would also just like to, Steve said it very eloquently and well, so I will echo what he said. Um, I do think that um, we, are, we are in the Midwest sometimes last to get things. So that means variants are on their way. So I can't stress, I just wanna reiterate this idea of getting vaxxed. It's really um, our only way out of this. And even though, um, you know, we're all happy to stop wearing our masks, we can only do it if everyone gets vaccinated. And as someone who's got a friend right now who's undergoing chemotherapy and can't get vaccinated, um, I certainly hope that anyone who isn't vaccinated walking around our community is wearing a mask. Not to mention all of our kids who can't get it yet. Exactly. Yeah. And, and to that point, um, I would hope that we would take the take the energy and focus that we've had encouraging vaccinations and uh, the mask mandate and work toward youth vaccination this summer um, in conjunction with public health and our other community partners to continue to increase the vaccination rate in our community. Um, it's important and the case counts at school show that the masks worked and hopefully um, the vaccination rate among the youth population will be such that we don't have to worry about it uh, ret uh, in the fall when they return. Oh, and actually that you brought that up, I do wanna commend the school district. The school district is going to continue to have their mask mandate um, until the end of school. I think as, um, as a community, we should encourage and support that as parents and community members going into the school to make sure that we are also honoring the school districts um, following of the CDC guidelines that say that schools should still remain masked. I just have a quick question on it. Did anyone uh, at the meeting you were at, uh, Lorraine, talk about the response uh, from people who may have received their vaccination out of state? Um, I think that there had been reported, people reported that they did out of state, but I believe that they also could call their provider, but also call the public health so that they have, and they, but they live in the city, that they should let them know so that they can be counted that way too. Okay, and you I just, I just, I just wanted to say, you know, sitting here looking out at, at at a room full of firefighters who give a great deal of themselves personally to protect their community, even though it's very unlikely that any of their houses will ever burn down. Um, we're asking you, or at least I am, uh, uh, I'm asking you, even if there's a very low likelihood of a bad result of coronavirus, to do something incredibly simple to make your community stronger and more resilient and protected. If you're out there in public and you're on the fence, call your doctor. Your doctor will be happy to talk with you. Your doctor probably knows more about this than, uh, you know, your friend from high school who posted the Facebook meme. Uh, so, so I'm just, this is the way out of here. I want decor to never have to wear a mask again after this fall. I'd hate to see it have to happen. Vaccines are the way to do it. Thank you. I, I, uh, I appreciate all the discussion and I'll go to roll call. Chisel. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Luce. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Hadley. 
Aye. Neil. Aye. Zittergoon. Aye. I would also move to waive the second and third reading and adopt. Second. We have a motion from Chisel to waive the second and third reading and adopt. Second by Zittergruen. Any discussion? I just want to clarify, this is not taking effect until the publication. Is that accurate? Correct. Which, which I mean, legally, there's Thursday. still a mask mandate in place until <laughs> it's published in the newspaper. The latest would be... Till May 20th. Get out May of that, will you, Dave? <laughs> Hadley, first ticket written. May, uh, actually, that would be May. Uh, according to the way we have to register, I mean, May 27th, would be the 27th right? <laughs> May 27th. <laughs> Okay, roll call. Chisel. Aye. Zittergrun. Aye. Neil. Aye. Hadley. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Luce. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, resolution 3195 amending the city's portion of the Winnishik multi jurisdiction jurisdictional. <laughs> Jurisdictional, is that right? Yep. Plan 2020. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, Sean Snyder from Emergency Management has been working with our departments. There is some Homeland Security money available for some needed projects that we have. So he has been working with them to potentially submit some grant opportunities for those projects but they need to be listed in that multi-jurisdictional hazard plan. So that is what this resolution does. It revises when you passed um, back in 2020, and it adds um, purchase and installation of permanent generators at critical water and wastewater systems, uh, purchase and installation of permanent generators at critical city buildings, um, for the EOC, fire rescue and police to maintain operations during electrical power loss. That would be at the library in the event we had to move the EOC. Uh, evaluate storm sewer infrastructure and deficiencies and improve them to reduce the potential for localized flooding. Basically, that's putting um, permanent flood pumps in the river. And then construct safe rooms for campgrounds and recreational areas. Um, so it would be a safe room at the campground. Uh, okay, so these are these are grants that we can opt out of at any time through the process. There is a 15%, correct? 15% match for these funds. Now I did sit in on a webinar today about the American Recovery Act monies that we'll be getting. We can use those funds as our match for this, because this is FEMA money. So it is something we can use some of that money for, should we choose to, as that match, if, that, if we want to. Um, and as of right now, that money is still only available for water, sewer, mm -hmm. and broadband, amongst a, couple, a few other things that we probably, um, and I'll let you know what that is later, but um, that we probably won't use it for, but. Those are, those are the highlights of what, the, what we can use them for. What so. was the timeline on this? On this, Chopper, do you know what the timeline is? I think they wanted to submit it rather quickly um, because it's still a homeland security problem. Went through this week or two. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh good. no, I meant like when are we going to find out if we are awarded, if we need to use the match? Luce would like to move resolution 3195. We'll do it, Steve. A second. Okay. Um, what would the price tag be, Chopper? Let's just say hypothetically all these are approved. Um, what was the, and I didn't look, I mean, I couldn't find it in Dropbox, but wasn't like the generator alone like $100,000? So there's several pieces. Uh, so if you're going to call the water generators, equal about 217000 so there's two pieces, 50 million. Okay. The one that's the library is a large one, there's all that one. Yep. 
Well, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're like 400000 a piece, right? Yeah. Is there a microphone there, Chopper? It means you have to repeat what you just said, too, please. All right, so the... Uh, water department, six generators equal about 220,000. The library between 80 and 107, I think. Uh, the pumps for the river are about 750, 800,000. Is that what you're worth guessing? And Andy, what's, Andy? what's the storm shelter did, rough price? Did? Yep. He doesn't have an exact price. It's just. But these are right. But to be clear, I think that the grant only would cover the storm shelter. Right, and these are all potential. We just need to have them in the grant in order to even fund them if we could. That's correct. To even yeah. have a possibility, like so, I said, we can opt out at any time. Mm -hmm. And we can do some, but not all. That's correct. correct. Was, yeah. there, was there a second to Steve's motion? Uh, no, I'll second. <laughs> um, motion was made by Luz, seconded by uh, Neil. Yeah. Yep. Uh, any further discussion? Thanks for all the work, staff. It looks like a yeah. lot. Roll call. Luz. Aye. Neil. Yeah. Hadley. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Chisel. Aye. Zittergoon. Aye. Yeah, and a big thanks to Sean Snyder because yes. he's yes. really yes. carrying the weight on all of this. So he has been excellent in being able to yep. seek funding and grants to the advantage of the city, but also the county. And I really appreciated any other work that was done from uh, the departments too. That's what working together is about. Okay, board and commission applications. We have two openings for civil service. I know I just received an application and I know, I believe there's another one coming in. And then we have an open position on the Board of Adjustment. Okay, City Manager, Department Head, Council reports. Okay, just very quickly, um, we've had a small ad hoc committee of consisting of uh, Mayor Borowski, Jeff Odie, um, Zach Current, Mike Ashbacker, and myself to, to um, review and study some of the architecting firms and engineering firms for the new fire station, potential new fire station. Um, and so we've been meeting about that and meeting with those groups. We would like to have a meeting with um, public safety um, so that we can go over what our recommendation to the council is going to be and, um, and then meet with the rural fire because we missed that meeting back in early April. So. I tried to call um, Dan Beard today, but I, I didn't get him. He didn't answer and he didn't call back. So I don't have kind of a definitive time that maybe the farmers will be done and right. able to come. So as soon as I have that, maybe we can get together and set a meeting to discuss that. Um, the committee would really like to have it on the agenda for June 7th. Mm -hmm. So if we could um, try to have a meeting about that and with them before, before that, it would be great. You mean before June seventh? Before June seventh, and I think, well, I think the farmers are kind of wrapping up. Sure. It's been pretty. It's been pretty nice weather for them. So, um, I'm hoping that maybe they'd be able to within another week or two. Okay. For me, it needs to be after the 29th. So. After the 29th. Yeah. Okay. Well, well and I think that can still meet the agenda. Yeah. 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 It's extremely important that we go through that. And public safety commission so that everybody gets a lot of information so right. and being able to provide information to the council right well and i so and i was just trying to kill two yeah. birds <laughs> yeah and it would be good to yeah. have the just be good to have some of the information we talked about for rural fire meeting mm -hmm. prior right. to that right and so. i and i've put some of that stuff together okay great. um so but i thought well rather than public safety having to get together twice if that, we can do it all in right. one meeting it would be probably beneficial for everybody okay anything else uh nothing from me mayor okay. anybody on the department end um i know that andy uh i was happy to hear that the swimming pool you've got things lined up for that including lifeguards i know that was an issue 
Uh, he said it should go for the pool to open June 1st. I think they've got staffing for summer recreation. Um, we actually have somebody in our department that has an anniversary coming up. Oh, we do. We well, do. Not, not in my department, no. but in the city. We're in the city department. In the city department, we have somebody who's going to be here 30 years. Yes. That Who is that? Our chief of police. Did you remember that, or have you been here? If you you've had so much fun with us, you thought you forgot you've been here for thirty years. I got started when you were seven. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you lie about your age. <laughs> I just really can't quite figure this out. Uh, well, it's fun when that comes across my desk, and you know somebody's been with us thirty years. So I appreciate all the work that you've done in the thirty years. So. Okay, anything else from departments? I move to um, Chisel. Nothing this evening, Mayor. Carlson? Nothing at this time, Mayor. Teddy Brown? Nothing. Hadley? Nothing. Johnson? Nothing, Mayor. Neil? Just congratulations to all the Luther graduates and the upcoming uh, Decorah High School graduates. Maybe I'm a little biased right there, but <laughs> <laughs> happy graduation season, everybody. Um, I had, uh, we will, if you remember, we had representatives from the city economic arena, I'll put, that met with the Winnishie County Development and Jobs, and we were going to be meeting regularly. So, Steph and I uh, sent out, uh, well, Steph did, <laughs> a schedule to be able to pull those people together again so we can keep on top of knowing what uh, we're doing at the city, what they're doing at the county, and to keep that conversation going. Um, I believe that is all I have. I'll look for a motion. I have five might. Oh, I am so sorry, Steve Luce. <laughs> Just wanted to share there's an economic development committee after this meeting. Hey, thanks, Steve. And I do think if council is willing, next meeting on June 7th, we could add back in our meeting. If you're vaccinated, take good times or wear a mask and come and have waffle fries. <laughs> So. All right. Okay. Move to adjourn. Okay.